Joy O'Keefe is an assistant professor, bat researcher, and director of the Center for Bat Research, Outreach, and Conservation at Indiana State University. Summer after summer, Joy's work brings her to Great Smoky Mountains National Park to study bats, most recently to assess the effect of white-nose syndrome on their populations. Researchers use fine nets stretched across trails and water where bats travel to catch them mid-flight. Great Smoky Mountains National Park is home to at least 11 species of bats. This is the big brown bat, Eptuscus fuscus. This is one of our most common bats in the eastern United States, and it's actually found across all of North America. This bat is fairly long-lived. Probably in the wild they live 15 to 20 years. It is capable of flying within our forested environment. It's very at home here. Bats are in the order Chiroptera, which means hand, wing, and their wings are basically the equivalent of our hand. So you have a thumb up here and then you have four fingers uh, with a membrane stretched in between them. And then the membrane stretches from the fifth finger over to the ankle and attaches there. And then you have another membrane at the tail. So the big brown bat is actually one of our larger bats in the park which may seem surprising because he looks so small. So this bat only weighs about 18 grams, and we do sometimes see females in the range of 25 grams, but a pretty small bat. The bats here in the eastern United States are relatively small compared to some bats around the world, and that's because they're insectivorous. Insectivorous bats prey on small insects, and they need to be very adept and agile flyers to get around in the areas where they're going to forage for insects. So this is a relatively small bat. See, the big brown bat has this glossy brown fur on its back, a, a dog-like muzzle with a black, you know, black skin around his nose, and these bulbous glands along either side of his nose. He has kind of a, a buff brown belly pretty nondescript and overall the bat has a, a pretty drab appearance and that's something that we see commonly in bats that roost inside buildings or in caves and cavities and crevices is that they don't have very bright coloration. You can see these bats in colonies in buildings and there can be hundreds of them in a colony. It doesn't take very much space to house several hundred of these tiny bats. The bat has this cartilaginous spur that extends from his ankle towards his tail, and it has this little fleshy bump of skin there. We call that a keel. So that keel is actually um, an adaptation to give them lift and flight. The big brown bat is a, a generalist forager. They're going to eat a lot of beetles, which is why they have this big chompy teeth, and, uh, and moths, and other types, types of insects and they'll forage in openings as well as in the forest and they're able to maneuver through pretty cluttered environments but also uh, to use open spaces such as the grassy fields here in Cades Cove. 